Hello, hello. Welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm Robin Smith and the founder of the Healthy Relationships Sisterhood Facebook group. And so awesome to be here with you again. We are talking tonight about unhealthy relationship patterns. So I hope you're in the right place. Most of us have some of those. Raise your hand if you have an unhealthy relationship pattern. I know you're not alone. So here's what I'm going to talk about tonight, a little bit about why we have unhealthy relationship patterns and what to do about it. Of course, this is not a small topic, but I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> um, but who this is for is women with relationship dynamics where you find yourself complaining, you find yourself blaming the other person about um, whether it's your partner or someone else, a friend or your boss or a parent, um, and you want them to change. Who wants somebody else to change? Raise your hand if that's true for you. Or you can put a yes in the comments. And when you do arrive, I'd love to know where you're from, where you're calling from, or where you're chiming in from. Um, this is for you if you're with somebody who doesn't seem open to change. They don't think they need to change. They're not willing to change. We're going to talk about that as well. <clears throat> So let's look at why these unhealthy relationship dynamics may be in place. There's a few reasons, and again, keeping it brief tonight, but <clears throat> it's pretty habitual, I'd say, for people to blame and complain. Hi, Jolie, good to see you. <clears throat> so blame and complain. So say yes if you're a habitual blamer or complainer, and you can say which one. Nice to see you, Shelly. So I had a friend who said I was um, a chronic blamer. I can't, that's not what she said. It's something like that. And I, I remember totally resonating because for me, I grew up in a household where there was just a lot of blame. So it wasn't my fault, right, <laughs> that I was learned to blame. It was just what I grew up in. And so that's the thing. We learn from our environments, of course. As children, we're like sponges. We pick everything up, we copy it, we model after what you know what's happening around us. So let me know if you tend to be a blamer or a complainer, um, or maybe you used to be. Um, I'm seeing some comments. Yes, complaining. Hey, Jamie, good to see you. So, so first of all, don't be hard on yourself. Don't blame yourself if you tend to be a blamer because, um, well, you can, as my father used to say, it, you came by it honestly, right? So there's a reason you blame. It's everywhere in our culture. You can see it when we blame. We're using the you statements, right? I talked about this in my, in my communication training um, in the summer, if you were there. And... Um, it's just so easy to see what the other person's doing. It's so much more easier, more easy to see what someone else is doing than what we're doing, right? So we're really good at that. We're really good at just pointing the finger going, you're doing this and this and this. And um, we can see it so clearly sometimes, but a lot harder to see so clearly what's happening internally, right, for us and how we're showing up. Yeah, so yeah, I'm seeing your comments. Some of you are doing both. Of course, it's just we all do both probably until we learn to get out of that habit. Um, it seems like it's their fault, of course. So it's not that they're faultless. You know, we all we all could say we're to blame for what we're bringing to the relationship. Absolutely. But I don't like that word really to blame. We're just responsible. You know, we need to take ownership for that. Um, but the other reason... Um, you know, we get into these patterns is that we are repeating childhood dynamics. So not only are we repeating like habits of communication, but the whole like way that we're show that we show up in relationship can be a dynamic that we probably experienced earlier in our lives. And a lot of that stuff gets set up in childhood. So if you, I was talking to someone today, if you feel like you know, you, or you've had this story or this self kind of talk that, you know, it's all on me, 
or it's never safe for me here, or people don't like me, or people are out to get me, right? Raise your hand or say yes in the comment if those are familiar, or if you know what your own version of that is, put that in the comment. Because when we have something like that, I used to have a nobody likes me thing. And of course, that came up for me in childhood when I was different from my friends or they were doing, you know, they were doing things differently from me. Um, <clears throat> I used to tell myself that and that's so horrible and painful to feel that. But I remember repeating that going forward in my, as I was an adult, a younger adult, and even in my 30s and 40s, having that story repeating. So put a yes if you know you, ha you tend to repeat a childhood dynamic in your life now if it's still happening. Most of us um, do that unconsciously. So now we're going to turn towards what you can do about it. And the first thing I want to say is that if you know you're in an abusive relationship, you know, I'm not talking to you now in general because I'm basically, if you're in an abusive relationship, number one is get out, right? Keep yourself safe. If you feel threatened, if you feel unsafe, please take care of yourself physically and get out of the relationship or emotionally if you think you need to do that. So that's number one. Um, I, and I want to take back, I'm not, not talking to you if you're in an abusive relationship, but I just wanted to say that's, you know, if that's you, do that first. Um, Jamie, I'm seeing it's all on me. Yes, and I'm seeing some yeses, and I want to get away from myself sometimes. I know, I'm sorry to hear that. Sadly, yes, repeating patterns. Yeah, and so just know that you're not alone. You've got lots of company in that. And um, I, I wrote a post on Instagram today, and so this is partly inspired by that. We watched the movie, um, now I'm going to forget, Burning Planes. So if you get a chance to see that, it's actually, we had a Prime, uh, we're doing a, like a free trial of Prime on Amazon. So it's there if you want to check it out. It's good. It's with Charlize Theron, and she does a great job, and she plays this woman who's kind of rather tortured, uh, like a tortured soul. She's um, she's just having a rough time in relationships and just, and you could see the pattern, right? And so it turns out she had all this childhood trauma. And, um, and what was sad to me was that she didn't get help. At least it, that was never discussed in the movie. So she's just going through life, you know, in her thirties or whatever she was supposed to be, um, with all this baggage she was carrying around, all this pain, all this hurt, this weight of burden, right? And she just, it, you know, what do people do with that when they don't get help? They turn to drugs and alcohol, cigarettes, like overeating, you know, they, we just need somehow to cope with all the emotional stuff we're carrying, with all the pain. And so we, we act out and sometimes that's, we act in and we hurt ourselves and other times we act out and hurt other people by being hurtful, right? Through our communication or our actions. So that's my number two is please get some sort of help because this takes, if you keep repeating a pattern, you're in a cycle, right? And, and obviously if you could have gotten out of it, you would have <laughs> by now. So the thing is, it's like we have blinders on. We can't see our part in it very well when we're in it. We're just so locked into the habitual pattern of, like you said, whatever it is that you've been doing. It's all on me or I'm not safe or nobody likes me or whatever that was for you. Um, it seems so much like it's the other person and they have to change. But you know that if you always are thinking that everybody around you should constantly be changing, well, it's time to look inward, right? What am I doing that I keep ending up with people who I don't like being around, right? Or who I have the same, you know, struggle, same flavor of struggle with. Um, so let's see, I'm just pop into my note, make sure I'm covering what I wanted to. <clears throat> so I was saying get help and either you know, do it while you're in a relationship. If you're in a romantic relationship, you know, you don't want to leave or at least you want to give it a chance or you leave the relationship and get help, right? Which is what I did in my last long-term relationship. I just decided 
I needed to leave and I got, I did a lot of work on myself. Um, but the thing is, right, if you don't, you're either likely to, to feel worse over time. So that's what happens if we don't get help. It's like trauma accumulates over time because other hard stuff happens, right? It's not just what happened in childhood, but other things occur. And if you've had a traumatic relationship, you know, that piles on. I was just talking to someone who said, you know, a very, was in a very abusive relationship and got herself out. And it's like, that leaves a residue in your system. And then any kind of shock trauma, which is like an accident or a fall or, a, you know, you were in a robbery or um, whatever happened, someone died close to you, all that accumulates. And if you don't work with it, it's like flossing your teeth, which I need to do right now. If you don't floss and brush, you know, that's plaque accumulates and it becomes, you know, it rots your teeth. So same thing internally with your emotional life, your mental life, you feel it over time. Like maybe you don't cope as well anymore. Like maybe in the past you could just shove it under the rug or like smoke a cigarette or drink some beer and you're fine. But now you're like, you know, maybe you're more weighted down. Maybe you feel more depressed or more angry or you're, you're acting out a lot more and, you know, hopefully you don't let it get so that far. But if you did, you know, I really want to encourage you to get some support because you cannot see it from the inside as well as somebody else can from the outside who can sort of see, help you see what you're doing in the dynamic. Um, because if you don't get help, what's likely to happen is you are likely to repeat the pattern, right? Until you interrupt. I love the term from my teacher, pattern interrupt, right? Until you make a pattern interrupt, you're probably going to repeat it. So, yeah, that becomes baggage. Baggage is no fun. Um, yes, taking responsibility, Jolie, thank you. Exactly. So that's kind of what I'm pointing to is relationships take two. So for sure, the other person has their part and you have yours. And um, some of us were in another training recently in the, and well, anyone who's not been there, I think all of you who are here are in that one too. But if you are seeing this now and you still have time to get into, um, there's a link on this page for the um, overwhelm fix. That's some great training. I highly recommend it. So go to the, scroll down and find the link for that and, and go check it out before it goes away which is going to be this weekend, which is probably by December 13th or 14th. Um, check that out if you can. But anyway, we, responsibility, when each person should take 100% responsibility for their part. So between two people, there's 200% responsibility. So when we're blaming, we're sort of trying to give part of our responsibility over to the other person. Um, so... The thing to remember is that you are co-creating the relationship pattern that you're in. It's not just the other person. You have your part, whether you're being silent or whether you end up blaming or whether you end up complaining or whether you're just complicit in the dynamic. There's something that you do to feed the pattern, right? Or else it wouldn't be happening. Take that in a moment. What is your part? And so if you know, go ahead and put that in the comment and, um, and share that because sometimes it can be really helpful to just out yourself. And we're in a safe space where no one's gonna judge you and, um, or even know who you are. So um, I encourage that. And, and that's kind of what I wanna encourage in general and I'm gonna get to that in a moment, but it's basically getting curious about your part. Um, so I'm just reading my notes through. Well, that is here, what I was going to say next. So get curious about how you keep the dynamic going. The words that you say that might trigger the other person, how you say them, the tone, right? Um, and also the lenses that you're wearing, as I was mentioning before in the, um, you know, as we looked at like that story that you tell yourself, nobody likes me or whatever it is. When you have those lenses on that you look through life with, that influences then how you relate to other people right so if you think um, you're a bad person you're you know you're likely to think you're being criticized or you know people are always criticizing me um, if you think you're not likable you're likely to think people are always judging you or not approving of you and that type of thing so 
that's what I want you to start, you know, connecting the dots on is like how the lenses that you have on, the beliefs that you carry are influencing how you think others are treating you or what's happening in the dynamic. And I see Jamie says her part, not speaking up. Nice. Thanks for that recognition and outing yourself. Um, so that's where, again, it really just helps to have somebody else who can see, just like sometimes your friends can tell you or your parents or someone close to you. Do you but I also recommend someone who's a professional at it, right? Who's who's not gonna, you know, blame you or make you wrong or bad or just tell you you're messed up and that type of thing. Because you need to get underneath the pattern. You need to, as I think of my work, and I've shared this lots of times, like a, you know, those balls of twine or something, and when it's tangled, <laughs> not the one that's neatly wrapped, but the one that's a big tangled mess and how you have to like super gingerly like pull this one and then, oh, that one goes over here. And that's how I feel like, the work that I do is with my clients is like a very carefully kind of peeling things away and seeing what's connected to what and oh if we can open that up then that will release more and so things are intertwined um, inside of us and and often so connected one pattern feeding another and whatnot so <clears throat> So I encourage you to get some support. I'm not saying from me, I'm almost full in my personal practice. If you do want my support, definitely reach out. I could probably fit you in, but but also consider, um, yeah, just what type of support you would like. <clears throat> so, so a question you can ask yourself, and this is related to kind of the stories that you're telling, the narrative in your head, right, is, is it absolutely true? Can I prove that it's true that nobody likes me or that everyone's out to get me or everyone's going to hate me or no one's going to talk to me anymore if I do that or, you know, all that stuff that we say, they're judging me, they think I'm stupid. Um, so put a comment about that if that makes sense to me or please ask a question if you do have any i definitely want to respond to any questions that are that are arising for you so that's that part that was what i'm calling step three is just really own your part get curious about what that might be and how it's playing into the dynamic um, and then how to start changing that role, right? And the thing is, as you get support, however you get it, as you start to change how you're showing up in the relationship, you know, the lenses maybe are getting more opaque or maybe they've come off and you're not playing into the dynamic anymore, that affects the other person, right? They're less likely to keep up their part. <laughs> um, I have an example of a client I was working with whose husband would do go into what she would call like a tantrum. And it was so unpleasant, but what she would do before our work was she would totally engage with it and get really defensive and get angry and you know, and so they'd be in it. And it was like, God, they were just always having these fights. As we started our work together, and I was questioning her on the value of that, <laughs> she realized without me even needing to say it, like, oh, I could just not engage, right? I could just walk out of the room. Like, why why participate in that? You know, like, he's acting like a 12-year-old, you know? So I don't need to um, feed that. So notice how you feed, right? Whatever the dynamic is that you're here, here for and see what you can do to shift that. And that's where, you know, if maybe you can figure it out on your own, right? Maybe you just don't talk back when you have, you know, maybe you have the urge to speak up for yourself or like make them wrong or like criticize them or blame them or whatever. Um, and notice how that has worked in the past, which is probably not very good, not very well. Um, and then try and do something different and see how that goes. Um, and what I found with my clients is that as they do their part in the untangling, even if their partner isn't doing anything different, things do start to shift because they're not, like I said, kind of feeding the fire anymore. I love the image and the, um, the metaphor of 
you know, if you're playing a game, right, the game is like, let's see who can piss each other off more. Or let's see how, you know, angry we can get together or whatever. Um, it's like a game of toss, right? You're throwing a ball or throwing it back. Well, you said this. Well, you did that. Well, that's because you were like this. And that's because, well, last week you did that, right? You're just throwing a ball back and forth. So what if you just let the ball drop and you don't pick it up? It's like, huh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, sorry, not playing. So that's, that's one um, toss that I have for you to consider trying that one on. And I'm seeing lots of comments, so I see definitely, hey, Tamara. And it helps me to be able to listen but not necessarily agree. Exactly. We don't have to agree. Um, we can't really agree, I don't think, all the time, right? We're just so different. Everybody's different. I can be easily crushed. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're responding to specifically, so you're welcome to share. And then Jolie says pause. Yes. Pausing is good before speaking and before... Um, acting out right before that knee-jerk impulsive reaction the pause is great it's something I teach um, in my work as well hi Risa you don't have to go to every fight you're invited to yes thank you for reminding me of that lovely phrase great to see you here yes um, so my last piece I wanted to share is that as you do educate yourself and start to change your patterns, you probably will communicate differently. You probably will also see things differently. Like I said, if you start to take off your own lenses, then it may even be that you don't even see things the same, like the same kind of problem that you did before. You're not no longer thinking he's trying to get under my skin or he's not trustworthy or you know maybe you don't think that as much because you've changed your perspective does that make sense just listening yeah so that's what i wanted to say tonight and i'd love to know if you have any questions and i'm going to just repeat quickly that we where we've been and what we've looked at before we finish that this training was for you if you find yourself repeating familiar unhealthy relationship patterns and then the why because it's just so kind of mm, habitual to blame and complain and also to repeat patterns that we were in as a child oh yeah i did i did forget to say one part of that which is i think of it excuse me <laughs> i just ate so i'm a little digestive action going on um, one part of that is or what how I think of that sometimes is like the key in the lock right that um, when you're when you're a key right and you might look for that certain kind of lock to fit in so as you that's the pattern right and that's repeating like always looking for that kind of dynamic okay that's a good fit so we can do that thing that I've always done right I can now do my part of like nobody likes me or see you're always out to get me or see I'm a bad person but when you change the dynamic you know you, it's like you no longer have that key anymore so you're not trying to fit it in that same kind of lock I hope that makes sense and that metaphor works for you so then we looked at one, if you are in an abusive relationship, please leave. Don't stay in that. Get help as soon as possible. Two, everybody should get help if they're in an unhealthy relationship dynamic, even if it's not abusive. But if you're just tired of the fighting or tired of the you know, blame game and the dysfunction that's happening, um, because if you don't get support, you're probably not going to change the pattern. If you don't do anything differently, right, you're probably going to keep repeating it. And then we looked at three, looking at your part. What is it that you're contributing to the dynamic? And getting curious about that, asking the question, is it true? Do I know it's true? And then also trusting that as you do your work on yourself, not trying to fix the other person. I have clients, people who come to me sometimes who are interested in working together, um, who it's not anyone I'm working with now, so just so you know that, no one who's here right now, but, um, you know, sometimes we think we come in and like, okay, I want your help 
to make that person stop what they're doing. It's like, I can't help you with that. Like, I can only help you with you because you're the one who's coming to me, right? I can't help you change that person. So it's sort of a dead end if the person you're with, not completely, that's what I was saying at the end, but if the person you're with, one, takes no responsibility for their part, two, has no interest in changing, three, is not willing to change, and four, isn't really capable of changing. How much energy do you want to put into a relationship when someone is not open to it, not willing, not interested, not capable? That's something for you to consider because it's then a drain, right? You can show up just totally drained and exhausted because you just keep trying to change somebody. That's, that's a, you know, a vicious cycle that's really depleting. I'm seeing unknowingly going forward. I wish I knew what you were, you were responding to now, Tamara. I'm sorry, but feel free to remind me. And, um, and Felicity, welcome. What should I do if I cannot afford the support that I need? Great question. You know, hopefully you can get Medi-Cal because at least if you're in California or whatever state you're in, there's often coverage now for people with lower income, and I strongly encourage that. Or insurance. If you have insurance, therapy is covered on insurance. Therapy is covered with Medi-Cal. I'm in California, so that's all I know about, but I'm pretty sure it's covered in similar programs in other states. So I, I love that. I love that that's covered, and you can basically get therapy for free. So I want to give a big thumbs up and, and encouragement to do that. There are groups like AA or um, you know, Al-Anon and different kinds of groups. If you have addictive tendencies or a child of, a, of parents who were alcoholics or something like that, Narcotics Anonymous. So those are great support systems. Some of them are online, of course, right now, and that's great. Um, there's a group like this, um, but yeah, that's what I would recommend if you just don't have funding. Um, just so you know, I'll just put a plug in for it, is that I do offer a group program. I'm in the middle of my current group, but in a few months, I'll be starting a new one. So if you are interested in that and you want to hold a spot in that, definitely um, hook me up. And what I'll do is I'll put a link for you to have a chat with me if you're interested in that so you can save your spot because I think um, the last one filled up and I'm, and I'm sure the next one will too. So... Um, I am going to be opening up spots for you to reserve in advance. Um, okay, and the last thing I was going to share, and I'll, I'm going to grab another link. So first link I'm putting in is if you don't have it, haven't seen it, would like to see it, I'm putting the link in the, in the comment section to um, my free guide. It's a really a short PDF on... Um, what I call how to, how to avoid the three biggest relationship mistakes. And it does address a little bit of what we were talking about here tonight. So it's uh, chock full. I also, if you get that, you're going to get um, relationship tips from me, heads up about talks like this or other free trainings. So, um, and of course you can unsubscribe if you don't want to stay on my list, but do check that out if you haven't seen that yet. If you did sign up and haven't seen it, please check your um, your spam folder and your um, promotions folder because sometimes my stuff ends up in there and you just have to like slide it over into your priority inbox so um, and save and so that my stuff will go into um, your priority inbox. And the other link I'm going to share with you is if you did want to get on my calendar, um, I'm going to open up some spots. Honestly, I don't have any spots open right now because I've been so full with clients. I don't have any. I decided not to open any spots. But since I um, am open to talking to you tonight, um, I'm not opening spots for tonight, but give me like a half hour or so after we end this call and I'll open up a handful of spots on my calendar for those of you who might be interested in either um, a working with me privately or getting into my upcoming group. So that is there for you. And, the, and that session's a great opportunity to get some um, more self-understanding. So everybody, I'm not seeing any more questions, but let me know if you have any. And I hope this has been helpful. Go ahead and put in the comment uh, your biggest takeaway from tonight. What What's something you want to remember, you want to implement, um, or that you had an aha around in the talk tonight? I'd love to know. 
Now wait a sec for that. I don't know if I finished a thought. Oh, I think I did. I was thinking about, um, yeah, sometimes we, we just are so committed to feeling like it's the other person. And for sure, other people have their stuff that they're bringing in. And most of us could use some inner work and, you know, some skills and relationship, communication and whatnot. But if we keep um, trying the same things, right? What do they say? The definition of crazy is if you you keep trying the same things and and expecting a different result. So I'm not saying anyone's crazy here, but you know what I mean, that we're, we can't really expect change if we're not doing anything differently. So that's where I'm really wanting for you to own your part, take full responsibility for what you can do internally to shift how you're showing up in the dynamic. Just equanimity. All right, Tamara, great to hear it. Equanimity. If People don't know that term. I learned that on in meditation retreats I used to do, um, which is basically like contentment. It's like you're you're in this place where you're um, you're not wanting more than you have, and you're not um, wanting to push away that which you, um, that which you do have. You're not wanting what you don't have, and you're not um, repelling or pushing away what you do have. So you're you're okay with things as they are. Uh, Risa, how much effort are you willing to continue putting in when it's one-sided? Great question. Yeah, so that's the takeaway. Yeah, because that's where complaining comes in, right? I've been trying so hard. I keep doing it. I've said it so many times and nothing's changing. Well, nothing's changing, right? So it's time to do something different. Great to get out of my own sphere and have reinforcements of open action. Love these takeaways. Looking at the role I play in the dynamics of the relationship. Yes, looking at your role. And Shelly, we're going to do that more soon in the group. Takeaway, it takes two. And if the other party isn't taking responsibility, etc., do I want to continue the relationship? Yep, it's such a good question. right? And, and you know, obviously when we're committed to people, like, you know, maybe it's a job you don't want to leave, or maybe it's a marriage you don't want to leave, then, you know, you try and um, negotiate, you try and see like, what's possible here? Are you willing to do the work? Or, you know, you, you, you try and do your part. I remember, um, this is related and a little different, but I was sharing with somebody today, a client I was working with about a dynamic uh, that Patrick and I had, and it has to do with acceptance, which was that he had a firm no, for a while to getting health insurance because he would have to pay a lot out of pocket and he was just like no and for me i was scared about that it would just brought up my own anxiety and fear that what if something happened like what you know i couldn't afford to pay a hospital bill or you know what maybe our house would get taken you know so just i would that would i would just go into fear um but it wasn't a deal breaker. Like I didn't want to leave the marriage because of it, but I also couldn't change him. He was fixed. That was his stance. He was committed to that. And so I basically needed to accept that that's how it goes. And I need to be able to just work with my own stuff, which was my fear instead of like trying to keep bugging him <laughs> to change. Hopefully that resonates because um, I think a lot of us have stuff like that where we just, you know, at some point, like, when do you stop trying? You know, when do you learn to accept and work with your own stuff that's coming up instead of putting it all on the other person? You have to change, so I'm not going to be anxious, right? I couldn't do that. I couldn't change him, and I didn't want to leave him. It wasn't that huge. Okay, y'all. It's been great. Um... Patrick should be coming home soon, so I'm looking forward to maybe taking a bath together because, you know, we're doing great. <laughs> so I'm going to sign off and go get cozy and warm with my sweetie and really appreciate you showing up. Um, and feel free if you're here after the fact, you're watching the replay, leave me comments, leave questions. I do come back and I comment and I look for your um you know, anything that I can uh, support you with. So I'm um, happy to, um, to respond to you later. All right. Thanks for being here. Good night.